Hey everybody, my name is Jennifer. This is Metatrona speaking. I'm going to be talking to you today about the Lightworker Gateway, and I'm also going to be talking to you about some of the channeled information that came through that is regarding the upcoming eclipse. So the eclipse is going to take place on Monday, April 8th. And I might let me go ahead and actually start with that information. That's the probably the shorter part of this message. So for the upcoming eclipse, this is the message I received. The day of the eclipse will finalize the opening of a portal that will bring in intense energies for the next six months. So the month of April is going to kind of be like this really big push of this energy. And then the uh, residue or remnants or results of that, what's going on in April is going to actually hang around for us for six months. Um, so these energies are going to be offering all of us the opportunity for intense spiritual upgrades. But there is a catch. <laughs> these energies cannot be accepted if you are resistant to loving yourself, if you are resistant to change, or if you are like just resistant to transformation in general. So the energies available, and this is going to be approximately from, I mean, in reality, it's already started. These energies always start coming through before uh, the peak part of the portal. And then there's always like a time afterwards, six months in this case, where the energies are present. So approximately from April 8th through October 8th, the energies available are radical, intense, expansive energies that want to open up your spiritual journey in ways you never thought possible. So this new energy that's coming through, it's kind of amplified because we already have kind of the energy of the year. So this year we have dragon energy going on that is causing the entire year to be a great time to manifest. It is a great time to start a new project, a new business, a new job, write a book, um, anything you can think of. This is the right time to start investing in yourself. This is the right time to heal. Um, so we have the April energies that are creating like this energy portal for like six months on top of these abundance energies. And essentially what you get when you combine the both of those is like, this is the energy of your wildest dreams being able to come true because the tra this transformational energy that's coming through, it is looking for things to change and looking for things to fix and looking for blocks to unblock. And if you're open to it, then of course that can happen. Um, and so if, think about it, if all of us have our blocks removed, the things that are holding us back, sorry, this is Oliver walking around, the things that are holding us back from going out there and doing the thing we want to do, if we have those blocks removed, and then we also have this really ample, um, abundant energy available to us, it's absolute perfect time to be doing this. Um, let's see. This is revolutionary energy that is seeking to overthrow what is no longer working for you and increase that which is aligned with your soul. So here's the catch. We all have aspects of our lives that are not working for us. We all have lower dimensional thoughts and lower dimensional ways. In order to benefit from this energy, you're going to have to put effort into your own growth or your own expansion. You can't just um, like sit back and be like, okay, energy, do it for me. Like the energy is there, but if you are not working in alignment with the energy, you can't benefit from it. It's just floating right past you. Let's see. The nature of these energies is to want to create radical change 
And that includes releasing from you the things that are not aligned for your highest purpose. Are you in a job or a relationship that is not in your best interests? The next six months may become much more difficult while the energetic world tries to bring this to your attention and, ac- and encourage you to make a change. So if you're resistant to making the change, the universe is probably going to put the pressure on a little bit in the areas of your life that are not aligned with your soul. Might be one area, might be two area. Please, dear God, don't let it be all areas. Um, but so those areas of your life might start to you might start to feel more friction. And that is the universe trying to point this out to you. Hey, this is not going to just get better on its own. This is really just not working for you. If you ignore the universe's push to change you and you resist stepping into something new, then these energies are going to pass you by. If you can be brave and choose to align in with your best interests, even when you don't quite know what that means for your future. This is the boldness that will be rewarded by these energies. So most of us, our excuse or our reason for not moving forward is, well, I don't know what life is going to be like if I quit that job. Or I don't know what life's going to be like if I move over there or if I terminate this friendship or if I go through divorce or whatever whatever the area in your life is that's not working it's scary right because we don't know what change is coming and our human minds like to tell us this lie that don't change because if you change you're going to get something worse You're going to get something worse than what you have. But that is not, (laughs) that is not what the energies are uh, setting us up for. It's the opposite. The energies are setting us up to align more with our soul. So while it's probably going to be very different than what our current situation is, it's going to be something that deep down inside feels right and makes you happy. There's going to be a period of time for the next six months where those who are asleep are more likely to wake up. It's a time when brand new psychic abilities can show up or upgrades in existing gifts can appear. So here's an analogy that they gave me. They showed me a little kid on a bicycle at the top of a hill, and they were like, okay, think of yourself as this kid on this bike at the top of the hill. The universe is about to, like, give you a push to see how far and how fast you can go along your journey. But if you, if you're like, Oh my, if you're like, you know, they're going to give you the push and you're like holding on to the brakes. You're like, nope, got your brakes on. Then if they go to give you a push, you're not going to move. You're going to stay still. So if you are scared of going fast or scared of what's at the bottom of the hill, then your bike doesn't move. You have to release your grip. You have to embrace a spirit of adventure and fun in order to not only benefit from these energies, but to actually enjoy the ride. If you have been struggling to manifest something or struggling to improve something that you've been working at, maybe you've been working on your your spiritual ability or your psychic abilities, Uh, maybe you've been working on your artwork. So if you've been struggling to work on something, the next six months is a good time to put effort into whatever those things are. Put in the alert, put in the work, release the need to control the outcome. So this is another way that 
human beings sabotage themselves constantly. We're like, I'm going to work on this thing and I'm going to try the thing. And when I'm done, it's going to be this. And we have a very exact idea of what this is, what this is going to feel like, what it's going to look like, how it's going to make us feel. Stop doing that. <laughs> because when you do that, and it, and then this thing comes along in a different form, you tell yourself it's not good enough, it's not the same thing, it's not what you wanted. You have to open yourself up to the fact that the universe might just have a better plan for you than you have for yourself. So when you go to learn a new skill or when you go to create something, anything, music, artwork, jewelry, any, anything creative, writing, your book, don't have any rigid ideas of what it's supposed to be because you're going to block yourself from the full extent of the divine information that's coming through to you. You need to be able to channel all of it to get that, that, the product that you want to get from it. Um, when your gifts are not showing up the way you expect them to show up, you're telling yourself, you can't do it, or it's not there, or it's not working. And most of you, most of you have at least one gift that's working great. Maybe two or three or four. But you downplay it. You're like, oh, no. And, and we have to quit doing that because you're on an unconscious level, you're putting a block on it. You're not allowing yourself to ever grow because the place that you're at currently, you're rejecting. You're like, nope, that doesn't count. So how are you ever going to move forward if you won't acknowledge how much farther along you are now than five years ago or 10 years ago? You might even have had the same gift level the whole time, but now you kind of are starting to recognize it more. And that counts as progress because if you have no awareness of when the divine world is communicating with you, it's almost like it doesn't count, right? But it does count. Um, I don't want you guys to feel like you have blocks when I know. Many of you do not. I'm going to pull back up this message because I got on a tangent. If, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, put in, the put in the work, release the need to control the outcome, and see what happens. Be brave. Be bold. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. You are so loyal to sameness and predictability. But why? All energy becomes stagnant in time. Changes are necessary to improve your current situation. I'm going to say that again because he wants me to. Changes are necessary to improve your current situation. We are there with you, encouraging you to take these steps. Sometimes the most important changes you can make are the changes within yourself. To slowly replace old behaviors with new ones and to have compassion for yourself when you are struggling. So in the beginning of this message, I was talking to you about, okay, getting divorced, moving, switching jobs, all of these like external things. But the truth is, the biggest and best changes we can make, most of us, are internal. The internal changes are always going to be necessary, needed. We all have work to do. We will all have work to do our whole lives. We're never going to get to a point where we're done with it. 
Um, so that should always be the number one focus of your spiritual journey is how are you feeling? How are you uh, behaving? How are you responding to others? How are you responding to uh, the circumstances of your life? Those should always be your top priority and the things that you bring a ton of awareness to. At times, there's always going to be a need for a bigger life change. And for those of you who are in need of a big life change, you know who you are and you know what the life change is. I, I'm going to put that out there because I think that's true. Yeah. And that's what Mattatron's saying. You know. But for the rest of us, and actually for all of us, the internal work is the highest priority because we cannot we cannot ultimately control others we can only control ourselves and so you must be you must be the thing you want to see in the world right you must behave the way you want others to behave and you must um it just everything has to start with us it has to start with us knowing how to be aware of ourselves, us knowing how to make adjustments to our behavior and to our thoughts. Um, and we have to know these things because how else is there going to be a road paved for the next generation? How are our children that are being born right now going to know what to do if we don't pave a pathway for them? Because while I believe that children born now are probably having better childhoods than children born 60 years ago, there's still a lot of junk out there in the world that they're going to need help processing and that they're going to be responding to. And so we are the adults in society and we need to be the ones to sort this out. And yes, we have like no role models to follow whatsoever, right? Our parents didn't have this figured out. Our grandparents didn't have this figured out. But there always has to be a generation that figures it out. And it's, it's us. This is it. I mean, I say generation. It's, it's everyone alive right now. It's like this is, this is their chance so now or at some point in their life to, to wake up, to put this together, to start moving towards what an evolved human being what a complete human being is supposed to be like. Metatron says, we are always with you, supporting you, and preparing a new pathway ahead of you. No okay. crime. So that's the end of the eclipse message. I want to talk to you about the Lightworker Gateway. The Lightworker Gateway, shoot, I didn't write down the dates, but I can just channel them right now um it starts on the 5th okay so april 5th through may 5th april 5th through may 5th okay april 5th through may 5th is this next lightworker gateway this next lightworker gateway is going to involve a brand new chakra, or at least it's most likely a brand new chakra to you. Um, I only heard about this one within the last few months, never talked about it with you guys. So we're going to be opening up a brand new chakra and the galactic group that is going to be supporting this work is going to be the Whale Collective. So if you don't know anything about the Whale Collective, essentially whale energy is like this primordial, basic, kind of almost elemental um, energy that is used as part of creation. So there's part of this whale energy that is built into our DNA, our etheric DNA as souls, all souls. Um, whale energy is built into the like uh energy or like dna of planets so anything that is created has the same grouping this 
correct? Of galactic energies. So the, the whale collective, whenever they have taken me there, it's been like the most beautiful place ever. It is, they showed it to me as just being like black, black night sky in every direction and a bunch of stars. And there's like um, energy currents that you can't even see. There's like invisible energy currents. And these whales appear to be physical, even though they're not, because the whales, this is in the ninth and the tenth dimension. So there's no bodies, no bodies above seventh, 70. No bodies, but these whales travel through these currents just rhythmically, calmly, best thing ever. Um, and there's a lot of other ocean life there in the galactic ocean realm. But the whales specifically are what we're going to be talking about. So the whale collective are going to be working with us to open up that new chakra, or what I assume is a new chakra for you. It is called the whale matrix chakra. So just kind of a side note on new chakras. In general, new chakras are going to keep popping up for us as a species. Probably for from here on out because, uh, let me see how I wrote it down. So most, most everyone knows about like the seven main chakras that are, they're part of your etheric body or your energy body, but they are contained within your physical body. Most people have heard of those. We actually have thousands, thousands of chakras, both major and minor, that all work together. So some are within your physical body. A whole bunch of them are above your head, below your feet, in front of your chest, behind your back. Like they're everywhere. We have this massive. 3D energy body that we have no clue about. You know, we have very small, very little clue about, I should say. So most of humanity's chakras, think about this, most of our chakras are still closed and unused. Once we are, man, how do I even put that? Humanity, you know how, you know how humanity uses like, 2% of their brain or whatever it is. And we're just not doing anything with the other 98%. Once humanity starts moving towards what they're really supposed to be, once they wake up enough to start becoming conscious and start accessing all these higher levels of information, once their chakras start turning on and once their chakras start functioning properly and once they start using all of their brain, like, this is a whole new ball game. But right now we are operating at like 2% of our capability level, which is insanity. Um, and the, so essentially because the earth is ascending or has been ascending for quite a few years, um, we're finally starting to have people wake up more and we're finally starting to have some people who are able to align with a high enough vibration to start channeling this information about these new chakras. Um, we can't know about it until we start channeling it. You know, it's not something that we can see with our physical eyes. At least most people. I, I guess some people probably could see them, but I can't. Um, Let's see. All higher knowledge is waiting to be channeled, but unless there are people with vibrations matching those frequencies, there is no way to receive the knowledge. So all of this knowledge is just right there. But because we're so, with such a low vibration, we just can't tune into that radio station to get it. But it's like the whole universe is this open book waiting to give us the answers. Timing is also important. It is now the best it is now in the best interest of humanity to start gaining awareness of the vast network of chakra chakras and their many purposes. So some of this knowledge is coming forward now to help us understand 
the cosmic importance or the cosmic relevance, I should even say, the cosmic relevance. I'm going to put that, I'm going to change that word because Metatron liked that word better. The cosmic relevance of the chakras below our feet. By the way, this shows you what channeling is like because you feel into the energy and you try to place words that match up with the energy, but there's all kinds of human error that um, while we're, we're getting the, the right gist of the message, no matter what, we might be failing to articulate it as exactly as we could. So that's just based on whoever's channeling. Um, so let me tell you about these the relevance of the chakras below your feet. So below your feet and outside of your body, the chakras that people know about. So you have your earth star chakra. That's the first one that's below your feet. The earth star chakra is actually like misnamed, but we're very like planet centric here on earth. So we're like, it's the earth star chakra, but really it's the home planet. I mean, this is a horrible name. It's the home planet chakra because whatever planet you are on, this chakra connects you to the energy of that planet. Um, yeah, it's the chakra that's connecting you to your physical planet. Beneath your Earth star chakra is a chakra that not a lot of people know about, but I hope all of you know about it because I did a video on it. And if you don't know about it and you're listening to me now, please go find that video because it's amazing. <laughs> the energy from that video is amazing and it'll blow your mind. The dolphin matrix chakra is the chakra beneath the earth star chakra. And this um, is all connected to the dolphin energy. Um, I won't get into that. So it's a very both the dolphin matrix chakra and the whale matrix chakra are really connecting to crystalline energy in realms, well, in this case, it's the galactic ocean realm, which again is 90 and 10 D. So it's, even though it's below your feet, it's connecting to energy way up here in very specific realms. It's a very high vibrational energy. It's a very ancient energy. So all of these chakras beneath our feet, outside of our body, are symbolically, and I guess literally in a way, connected to our roots as a soul. So if you go really deep down in the roots, which we haven't gone super deep yet, but right now we're on the whales, the deeper down you go, the more ancient Wow, I'm channeling this right now. This is really cool. The deeper down you go, the more ancient the energy is, the more primordial the energy is in establishing creation and establishing a soul. Um, so that's why the Earth Star Chakra isn't that deep, because that's like your most recent incarnation. It's whatever incarnation you're on right now. Um, Let's see. So yeah, the roots of all of our souls are connected to the energies of higher realms, which are the same energies needed to help our planet thrive. These are elemental like energies. And by elemental, it's a tricky word for me to use, but I couldn't think of another word. Um, I don't mean elementals like earth elementals and air and water and I don't mean elemental like that I mean elemental as in a basic building block that's how I mean it so these are elemental like energies that are needed in all aspects of creation including in the matrix around earth and within the composition of each individual soul the crystalline whales show me that chakras are actually portals that connect us to the purest form of that energy. So all your chakras, not just the ones below your feet, all your chakras are portals. So if your chakras are flowing properly, 
you are connected to just the right amount. Let's take the heart chakra. You're connected to just the right amount of heart energy. And these are given to you by the universe. These are infinite universal energies that we are connected to. They sustain the existence of everything. So we are all on an energetic level being fueled by the one energy or by the universe. And I'm not even sure if I'm conveying this properly because sometimes they give me ideas and, and learning and knowledge that sounds really basic and like whatever when I put it into English, but the feeling of them showing it to me is like blowing my mind. The whale matrix chakra is a chakra of deep peace. This chakra connects to the energy of the galactic whales who are etheric, even though they project bodies that look just like whales, and they reside in the galactic ocean realm. The whale's energy is an infinite rhythm. It is the eternal heartbeat of the universe. It is a stabilizing, balancing, and comforting energy. This is love energy in a maternal form, sustaining life, nurturing, endless. This whale matrix chakra is our connection to this love, regardless of our circumstances, regardless of the unpredictability of life. Regardless of how you feel about your mother in this lifetime, there is a divine love that we can connect to in many different forms, and this is one of them. This connects you to a place of refuge, a place of serenity, where you can reset and rebalance your energy. The whale matrix chakra is like an umbilical cord connecting us to the primordial waters of creation where all life arose from. The galactic ocean realm is the nursery of all souls. I don't fully, and this is me talking now, I don't fully understand what that means, but I'm writing down what I'm channeling. It felt so right, and I wanted to in like a little emotional energy right now. I wanted to know more. Stop it. Is that me? <laughs> okay, well, don't let them do that. I think they're um, bringing like the uh, galactic whale energy forward and it's like getting me a little emotional. And I'm like, I don't wanna feel that way. Um, what was I trying to say? You totally distracted me. Um, I wanted to know more about what they were telling me, but it's like, they almost gave me like this little poetry about it. They're like, it's like the umbilical cord. This is like the nursery of all souls. And I'm like, okay, this is great. Like, let me read this book. And they're like, no, that's it. <laughs> that's all you get right now. <laughs> um, tapping into the whale matrix chakra can help you ground your soul to the physical planet. Okay. So we just talked about the root chakra, your root chakra, which is in your body, the base of your body, about level with your genitals or like the very, very bottom of your torso. Um, that's where your root chakra is. And this is where your physical body is able to, ooh, I said root chakra. Thank you. It's the um, earth star chakra. Thank you. Sorry. Because we have all these different, well, which one do you want me to, do? they both do it in different ways. Um, what did I write down? I'll just be consistent with whatever you told me the first time. He's funny. He's like, you can just say both. Um, what did I write down? The root chakra. Oh, I did say the root chakra. The root chakra helps you ground your physical body into the planet. So your root chakra Helps your physical body root to the physical planet. 
the whale matrix chakra helps your soul, helps your energy root to the physical planet. Yeah. Um, and what they told me is that they're like, this might sound strange, but this is going to be more and more necessary to be able to ground more deeply, not just on the physical level, but like really on the soul level, grounding down deeper because as higher and higher chakras start coming online, as we start getting all this access to all this higher information, we need to kind of like be able to counterbalance that by grounding ourselves more to be able to stay in this reality and not <laughs> wander off into the other realms, basically. I'm actually surprised that hasn't happened to me yet. Um, let's see. Yeah. Because as we open chakras above the head, we need to balance with additional grounding using the chakras below the feet. So that's the information that I have for you on the whale matrix chakra. I have like the coolest crystal grid to show you guys. I don't know why when I, when they were telling me what colors to use, I was like, are you sure? Are you sure this is going to look okay? But it, I actually like it a lot. So I'm going to show you a crystal grid that I put together with Metatron and with the, uh, I'm going to say the Galactic Ocean Realm with the Whale Collective. That would be correct. With the Whale Collective. And so the energy of this crystal grid is going to open up our Whale Matrix chakras. So I hope you will join me for this. Take a look. Is everybody ready to open up their Whale Matrix chakra? Let me show you. I'll just kind of quickly tell you what's on this grid just so you know in case any of you are really into crystals. The center stone is a uh, argonite that has been coated with um, titanium in order to give it like this like really crazy rainbow sheen. So that's fun. Um, and then we have black kyanite that has been coated in titanium as well in order to give it that like kind of rainbowy peacock sheen. There is lapis lazuli. There is azurite blueberries, which are like little geodes that have been cut in half. Uh, we have uh, freshwater pearls. We have uh, sunset aura quartz points. It's kind of hard to see it on the video. There we go. Now it's focused. Thank you, video. Really cool, Shane. Um, these bigger points are uh, tangerine quartz, which Metatron loves. And then we have 12-pointed 12, 12 quartz stars. We have, shoot, dodecahedrons that are... Uh, this is basically the same thing as this guy, except this one doesn't have points. He's just got little smooth faces on him. But I think that's everybody. So what I want to start off by doing... Let me... I want to... He's telling me to run white light through everybody, so we want to clear out all the junk before we get this going. Um... Let's go ahead and let's take three deep breaths together just to kind of ground your energy a little bit and raise your, I know, ground your energy and raise your vibration. I know that sounds um, like those are two opposites, but it's going to do both. Let's do a deep breath in and exhale out and exhale out slowly and completely and really empty your lungs. And then take a deep breath in and fill up your lungs. And then hold it when you can't fill it up anymore. And then exhale. Slow, slow, slow. Exhale, exhale, exhale. And we're going to do one more deep breath in. 
and hold it when you can't breathe anymore. And then exhale. Okay. And I just want you to visualize a white light that has rainbow sparkles in it, like a diamond. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull this down through your upper chakras. I'm going to pull it down through your crown chakra and your third eye chakra. And as I pull this white light down through you, anything that's of a low vibration, anything that's a dark energy that doesn't belong there, I'm just going to ask that it be kicked out of your system, kicked out of your energy field, as long as it's in your uh, highest interest. So we're going to go ahead and pull the white light down from the third eye to the throat. And you might need to clear your throat or cough. We're just going to pull the white light down into your heart chakra. And anything dark, we're just going to have it be pushed out of the energy body. I'm going to pull the white light down into your solar plexus, into your sacral chakra, into your root chakra, and down, down, down to the earth star chakra. And we're going to go all the way down dolphin matrix chakra, and deep, deep down the whale matrix chakra. I'm just going to let this white light push out through your arms, through your legs, through your 3D energy body. And it's going to fill up all these other chakras around you that I did not mention. And just breathe it in. And breathe it out. And try to relax in your physical body. And try to be in a receptive and allowing state. I'm going to do another deep breath in. Deep breath out. Okay. Let's see what Metatron wants to do first. Are we going to do sprays? Are we doing this one first? So he, this is one of the only times ever that Metatron shows sprays that aren't necessarily exactly coordinating with the colors on the grid, which legitimately threw me off. And then actually this one threw me off too. So everything he chose was kind of confused me slightly. So this spray is Master Jesus Christ Light. And I was like, what are we doing? Why are we? I mean, it's orange, but like, what are we doing? He reminded me that Christ consciousness is the same energy as crystalline energy. So people label it different ways. It's really the same thing. Um, so it's just a very high vibrational, very loving, very um, basic component of everything, of our makeup and everything else. Why am I spraying this more? Okay, I did a lot of sprays on that. It's a really nice smell. It's kind of um, like a little citrusy, but a little gentle. It's, it's subtle. It's not a, a strong one. So he had me spray that one. I'm just using these to spray you guys and also to spray this crystal grid to activate it. <coughs> Ooh. Oh, it's clearing more. Okay. Sorry for the cough. Let's see. Do you want this one next? Again, he chose sprays that I would never have chose for this in a million years. This is a green spray. This is wood dragon connection and support spray. All of these sprays are from Amanda Ellis, by the way. She sells them on her website. If you're interested, I will put a link to her products in the description of my video in case you want to connect to her there. So this is for luck, success, growth, and power. So this is very much, oh, so this is the energy. This is the energy of the year, literally. Like, it's kind of funny because she made this as, quote, the energy of the year. But this is literally the energies, luck, success, growth, and power. 
that is the type of energy that is being carried throughout 2024. So Metatron is connecting the two. He's connecting um, crystalline energies, basically. This is interesting. I know he's doing something bigger than I can understand, and I'm trying to make sense of it in the moment. This is the emerald spray. Sorry for it not being in focus. This is the emerald spray. Still not in focus. Renewal and recovery. So, if, you know what? Because I did, it's funny too. I was not planning on talking to you guys about the eclipse energies and the Lightworker Gateway in the same video. Absolutely was not planning on doing that until one minute before I turned on my video. But I think Metatron already knew because now we're doing renewal and recovery. So we're talking about healing things that need to be healed in order to be able to move forward towards luck, growth, success, and power. Yeah, he had a plan. Okay. This is Archangel Raphael, Balance and Harmony. I'm going to do this one. All of us could use more balance and more harmony, that is for sure. This is also really nice because balance and harmony, that is really consistent with the energy of the galactic ocean realm and, and just the whale collective specifically, I should say, because the dolphins are in there too, and the dolphins aren't what I would necessarily consider harmonies. They're more playful and fun. Um, the whales are real balanced, real consistent, real peaceful. And so that's that's a really good energy to bring in. And last but not least, we're doing Sanat Kumara, which is kind of funny because Sanat Kumara and Master Yeshua are both incarnations of our very own Metatron. And this is love and light activation. This one is the spray that Amanda Ellis makes that is synonymous with crystalline energy. I know I told you this one was, but this is not the one I would naturally pull if I was trying to connect the crystalline energies. Metatron had me pull this for some special purpose that I can't quite connect to at this point. This is the spray I use if I want to connect with the crystalline dolphins, the crystalline whales, the crystalline dragon, anything crystalline. The most gorgeous, glorious smell. You can see I'm kind of running low. I need to get like six more bottles because if I ever run out of this, I'm going to cry. Um, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just use my hand activate this crystal grid. Um, let me go ahead and call in Metatron, the Whale Collective, and any other guides that are needed in order to successfully activate this grid. Okay, and they're going to have me pull this down because <laughs> This is funny. They're having me work right now because I know they're having me pull it down here, like physically where I am here, because they're like, you need to just give a shot of this to Gaia really quick. So I'm going to do that. But also I'm going to pull this down through you guys as well. Just pull it down through Gaia real quickly. I'm going to pull it all the way down. So in the center of this grid, I'm pulling down through the center, down to the center of Gaia. I'm just going to connect those two. The center of Gaia is like the, quote, heart of Gaia, which is actually where uh, the whale collective or the crystalline whale energy already resides in the center of Gaia. That is like where she likes to have the whale energy because it's like a heartbeat. So it goes right in the center. Good. Leave it alone. Okay. So I'm going to leave that there and just let her take whatever she wants. And then I'm going to take this through all of us now. 
So this will be opening up the chakra. I don't know what the effects will be. Please don't watch this if you are driving. Please don't watch this if you are like about to go to work in like five minutes. Like I don't want to mess you guys up. Some people are very sensitive. So I don't think it'll do anything crazy, but I also don't want to ruin your day. So do this when it feels like the right time to you. So I'm going to go ahead and, and I just pull it, what do you want me to, he wants me to do something different, hold on. What do you want me to do? Uh, okay, hold on. I'm, okay, hold on. I need to, I'm going to like manually open this chakra up on all of you and myself. Okie dokie. Can I just, okay. Okay, now can I pull it down? Okay, now we're gonna pull this energy down to kind of properly wake it up. So I'm just pulling this energy down through your head. And it's all this energy that we just mixed in together here. So it's all present on this grid and it's all the stuff we sprayed. I'm pulling it down through you. And it's gonna look just like the grid. It's gonna look kinda, kinda rainbowy. Kinda blue, kinda green, kinda orange. Pull that down through your stomachs, through the bottom of your body, down below your feet. I'm in the Earth Star Chakra. I'm in the Dolphin Matrix Chakra. And we're in the uh, Whale Matrix Chakra. Okay, and I'm just going to let it sit there and just take some deep breaths. Just comfortably, just relax. I don't think I feel anything. Okay, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did I say that? Is that from them? That makes no sense. I can actually feel it um, in my crown chakra, which that doesn't make sense at all. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I do not know what's going on. I could feel like something moving around in my crown chakra, and then I felt something left me that shouldn't have been in me, so that's fun. Okay, tentatively, I don't feel anything crazy going on. Feels like something's happening, but nothing I could actually put words to, so I don't think it's gonna hopefully mess with anybody too badly. You know what it feels like it's doing though? It feels like it's, um, dang. I think it's doing all these things these sprays said. I think we're doing renewal and recovery, balance and harmony love I think it's it feels like it's um it feels like I've just found a brand new wound I didn't know I had <laughs> that's what it feels like it feels like I almost feel like I want to have an emotional reaction and I don't even know what that means and I can feel it in my third eye why do I feel it up so high that it's so weird he's telling me he's like all of your chakras work together, just like the way planets all work together. They all need each other's energy. So right now, that whale matrix chakra is open, and it is releasing its energy into all of your other chakras. So that's why I'm like, oh, my crown feels weird. My third eye feels weird. It's going to start moving around into all these chakras, and it's like a dose of vitamins to make everything function better. And this is something your chakras have never had proper access to before. This is going to be constant access to the source of their energy. So it could, this could do all kinds of changes for people, but all of them are going to be in our best interest. Okay, solar plexus. I hate when things are in my solar plexus. It's weird that it's working top down. It's really weird. You'd think it would go the other way around, but there's something trippy about 
both the way that dimensions are set up because you know how when we're when we're ascending through the dimensions and we're like eh, six dimension seventh dimension and like the first 12 makes sense where you keep getting higher and higher and higher but then after 12 it's like time and space turns back on itself or there is, I mean, there really is no time or space in any of those. So I really don't even know what the reason is. But something happens where when you go to like the 13th dimension or the 14th dimension, it's not necessarily a very nice place to be. And so even though we think we keep going higher, it's like somehow we started going lower. So there's something about that that our brains can't understand yet. But the same concept with our chakras, it's mirroring it because... We were going lower in our chakras, but we were actually going higher. I know that makes no sense, but that's why I started feeling it top down. Man, I hate it when things are in slow access. So this is probably going to take, let me ask Metatron, 15 longer, 30, an hour, a day. Metatron, a day, 24 hours, longer? Oh my god. Like a week? Longer. Metatron. How long is, how long is this gonna take? Can you give me like a number of days? That's interesting. He just told me 66. That's more than two months. Okay. So this could be impacting <laughs> you and me for the next two months. Um I don't think it's gonna be anything wild it literally feels like it's clearing out some junk that shouldn't be there is how it feels to me because like I said it's in my solar plexus and it doesn't feel good because it's clearing something that I don't need um after that your chakras should feel more clear they should feel stronger and more aligned because they just got a dose of vitamins that they have not had in a really long time. At least not while you've been on Earth. Um, okay. Is there anything? There's something else he wants me to do. Really? He wants me to pull cards. That's funny. Metatron, we're like 20 minutes into this video here. Um, okay. Let's see what cards he wants. Let me see if I can reach him. I'm sorry if you can see my mic cord I am gonna like stretch my body out right now and try to reach over to my shelf that has all my cards okay which one two three four no no Metatron he's giving me a deck that's like a joke deck like whenever I pull it it's the most ridiculous stuff do you really want to pull cards which one do you want can't give me that many decks, can you? Okay. Um, I have like these little tiny shelves on my wall and I have one, two, three, four, I have eight of them. And all of these little tiny shelves are filled with Oracle cards and he just chose Three decks, well, four, I guess, if he wants that one. That's kind of a joke. Um, so I have four decks now from four different shelves. Let me see. I'm going to look at this one, which is the Shaman's Dream Oracle. I'm going to see if we can pull some cards. And actually, let me move this and you guys can see. I know it's like on the very edge of what you can see, but. I'm going to take my deck. I'm going to show you move stuff. I'm going to show you that I just do this. He wants this one. So we'll just put that off to the side. Oops. Sorry, you guys can see my mic cord now. Let me fix that. Let me see if I can fix that.
one. This no, this one. Oop! Don't play away. This one. Okay. Let's put this massive pile away, and I'll show you what he pulled. Man. And then let me check what time it is. Of course, I have other appointments, and he's like, let's do a super long video. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's see. I'm just going to show him to you how he pulled them. Uh -huh, we just talked about this. A tidy house. We're tidying our etheric bodies. Clarity and organization. Absolutely. I just talked about us getting more clarity. Heart. Home, compassion. So remember, the whale collective embodies heart. How do I say that? There, it's like uh, symbolic for heart energy. So this is referencing that, and the home part is really nice too. Heart home because um. The whale collective, it is a very like maternal kind of energy. It is very comforting and soothing and relaxing. And it does 100% feel like home. And that's the reason why I was like almost crying. <laughs> and I was talking to them earlier. In the hand, the universe is your partner. They are setting us all. I don't know, hopefully you guys can read that even with the glare. They are setting us all up right now for success. We need the universe. The universe is definitely our partner. This is where we're pulling all those energies from, from all of our little chakra portals. Crown games, right use of power. This is normally the card that they show when they're like kind of giving you a pat on the back. Like, hey, this is like, good job. You are, you have power because you're in a human body and you're choosing to use it to open up your chakras. This is the right way to use your free will and your power. Symbolically shown as a crown. Ruh -roh. This one says Sky Dancers Surrender. Look at the colors on this card. Got yellow, orange, and blue. And it's like those are the colors that we have on the grid. So Remember when he was, we were pulling the energy through and he was like telling us to be receptive. That's part of this. This is energy that's coming through to make changes to our bodies, just like the way the eclipse energies are going to be surrounding us for the next six months, trying to encourage us to make the changes we need. This energy is going to be within us. And so they're encouraging receptivity or surrender to that divine energy because it's to our it's to our benefit. It's gonna have me pull from this one. Cut two cards. Three cards. Four cards. All done? All right. Let's put these away. Let's show you what he's got. Does it matter what order? No. Okay, I guess I'll just start with the one he pulled first. So this one says, she who stands, 
They've named her Valencia. Resolute, implacable, determined. You know what's funny? When they show me her, they're like, don't be her. Because I don't know if you can feel her energy, but she's like not feeling very conscious. She's kind of staring off at nothing. She's like, this is what I do because I do it. I stand here. I'm determined. I do the same thing. Don't be her. <laughs> it's like, don't be stubborn. Don't be unwilling to move. Don't don't make up your mind that this is the end. Keep moving forward. She who doubts, sorry for the shine, guys. Enid, fear, wariness, trust. If you are going through a period of time where you're feeling kind of distrustful, I mean, this girl has reason to feel distrusting. I don't know if you can see, especially with all the shine, she's got like a scar running across her eye. So if somebody else gave her that scar, perhaps that's why she's not super trusting, right? If you're feeling fearful or distrusting or doubtful about things, this energy is going to help because it's grounding. Because it's that comforting love energy. So it's going to help balance that for you. Again, with the shiny cards. She who waits. Manara. Patience, waiting, determination. So, okay, this is just talking to people who are going through a rough time right now. Um, on this card, you can see a lot of dark energy, right? She's going through something. It's all around her. This could be like depression, just a hard time. But she has hope. She's got this little white butterfly. And so this is almost like uh, the guide's just saying like, Hang on, we'll we'll get there. Sometimes we have to go through these dark periods. And not even sometimes, all of us have to go through these dark periods in order to get to the other side of things. So, patience, she who waits. She who instigates, Regina, leadership, provocation, Power. So this is like really divine feminine energy. We got the female, we got the snake, which is representative of divine feminine energy. We got the yellow flowers and the yellow hair, which uh, corresponds to like the solar plexus, which is where the willpower is, the personal power, the confidence. Um, so this is the the energies they're giving us is trying to support us and and um, set us up for personal power. And for some of us, that'll look like leadership. And for some of us, that'll just look like being the leader of ourselves. Well, for all of us, it should look like that. <clears throat> okay. You want this one? Did you? Okay. So one more deck. One more deck. We'll see what Metatron has. Oops, let me move these over. This one? Oh, he's gonna... Hey, I gotta be honest. I hate this deck more often than not because... Don't give me a ton of cards because I'm bad-mouthing the deck. <laughs> he's already given me three. Um, this one? This deck is like this one no this one um this one too this deck is like really hard to read to be honest because the pictures are really bizarre and 
the words written with them aren't very good at guiding you in either. So you have to really be able to channel well to properly get the messages. Um, is there an order you want? Seriously? Like, let me show you this. I literally don't know how to read this card. It's like a girl with a flower for a hat. She's got all these flowers that are on her dress. It says weaving flowers. Like, how do I read this? So I guess she made her outfit, right? She knows how to weave flowers. She has a flower dress and a flower hat. So she's resourceful. Why? Okay. He's saying resourcefulness ties into what we're doing. It's not super obvious to me, but. Mm, okay. So as these energies from both the eclipse and this uh, whale matrix chakra, as these energies clear out blocks from us, and as our chakras get healthier, and if we choose to move towards thoughts and behaviors that support um, us growing as individuals, then all of a sudden it gives you the clarity where you look around yourself and you realize that there are all these opportunities that have just been kind of like sitting around you the whole time. Um, and so for her, she's like, you know, I don't really have any clothes. I wish I had some new clothes. Oh, hey, the universe has provided me with flowers. Let me. Let me use the flowers. So it's just being open-minded in order to meet a need, meet a want, and kind of co-create co with the universe. Never had this card before. It says night ride. It's an elephant walking through the water, two owls on his back, and one owl is kind of like sheltering the other owl. This feels like very like nurturing energy to me, even though, like I said, some of the photos are kind of bizarre. Let's see if I can get it to focus for you guys. Maybe not. Um, I don't know if I can read these, Metatron. I really hate this deck. I'm going to throw it out so you can't pick it for me. Um, <laughs> It's funny that I get maternal energy because the elephant has like husks. So it's definitely a dude. It's definitely a boy. But this is still feels like a very gentle, comforting energy. It just feels very much like the whale collective energy to me. This one, there's a girl riding like, I don't even know what animal that is. It's some kind of deer. And it says the journey. So here's my thought. She's got a giant dress on. She's trying to ride this animal that is not meant for transportation. And she's using like a ribbon to like steer this guy. So this is a really bad setup. So think about your journey. Are there aspects of your journey where you're sitting on a deer with a ribbon and you're pretending you are sitting on a horse with a bridle. Um, so I think the symbolism is like, are, do you have a setup in your life where you're expecting something from it that's big and you clearly just have the wrong participants? That deer is never going to be able to carry her and her dress using that ribbon. Like this woman is just not reasonable. So. Elixir of life. Got a lot of red in this one. Woman closing her eyes, smelling a flower. This has the energy of standstill, of like, 
stopping to smell the roses, right? So the energy of being is divinely feminine. The energy of the whale collective definitely has a female energy to it. Learning to be more and do a little bit less is what we need to do as a collective in order to balance our energies. Where is that spray? In order to balance our energies and have more harmony, just like the spray, balance and harmony. Man, I don't even know what I'm doing with these last cards. My home is my castle. So this woman is like growing plants in a castle on her back. She's holding a castle in her hands. Just going to look at this one. Here's the thing. So she says her home is her castle, right? But if you were this woman and you had to carry that castle around on your back, is that really your home? Is that really to your benefit? If there are things that you think you want in your life, but they are exhausting you and they are difficult and they are cumbersome and they are impacting your ability to feel and be free, is that really? Uh, something you want to keep in your life or do you want to downgrade this might not be a massive castle but guess what it's portable it's travel size it's convenient it gives her more freedom than carrying her castle on her back Told you guys these pictures were crazy. Um, this says the gardener. This is a woman. I don't even know what I'm looking at. She's holding a giant, I don't know, is that a green onion? Looks like a giant green onion. And out of the green onion are these teeny tiny little houses. <laughs> okay, so let's see. So, okay, this is complex. So see how her dress, I don't know if you can even tell this, her dress looks like the front of a house printed over and over and over again. So she looks like she's a house up here and she looks like she's a house there. But yet she's taken the time, put tons of effort into gardening this massive plant in order to get these little tiny houses. So again, she already has, it's, this is like symbolic. Her clothing is like symbolic of what she's looking for, she already has inside, but she doesn't see it. And so she's working her booty off to build and have the thing she already has. She works so hard and look at it. It's just these little tiny things that aren't even what she wanted. And then look. Look behind her. She already has a house. She already has several houses. She's not even looking at them. She's got her back to them. So are you looking for something in your life that you already have, but it's not coming to you in the form that you wanted it in? And so it's kind of invisible to you. This is like kind of some deep questions for everybody. And this card says lullaby. We have a man with a bowler hat playing, I don't know, I guess that's a cello. He's playing a cello. And in the cello, I'm trying to see the picture in the background. It's like a, it's like a it looks like an ocean maybe and a night sky with a moon.
Metatron, help me on this one. So should I tune into that? He's pointing out this guy's hat. You see how he has his hat so far down? He actually can't see anything. We can't see his eyes at all. And it's like not necessary, it's at night. It feels like this is again kind of bringing back that energy of in what ways are we turning our backs and closing our eyes to the things that we need to see. Just looking at the instrument, because it has the night on the instrument, but it's already night outside. I don't know if I can tune into this one, guys. Because my human brain is literally going, I have an appointment in nine minutes that I gotta go get ready for. So, okay, I'm probably not gonna get the energy on this card. If you think, you know the message on this one. Feel free to post it in the comments. I'm sure it's obvious, but whenever the brain kind of starts slipping into 3D thoughts, like, uh, what time is it? And uh, what's going on in the physical world? That's when it starts becoming impossible to tap into higher energies. We did a lot of cards and we weren't planning on it. So I think this is pretty good. So this is everything that I have for you guys. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope everything goes okay with the whale matrix chakra and also with the eclipse energies that are coming through. And then we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.